destruction. Has the U.S. analyzed uh, anything about this? About the failed test? Um, nothing that I mean, nothing that we've analyzed other than that we we certainly monitored that um, that there was uh, a, a space launch, an attempted space launch, but nothing further than what we said previously. I'm sorry, maybe I'm not understanding the question fully. Yeah, maybe you uh, uh, U.S. is still analyzing this, or they, why they failure this <coughs> in the satellite. We continue to monitor the actions that the DPR ta DPRK takes whenever, um, the, whenever it comes to a missile uh, or a space launch or a missile launch like this one. Um, you know, we're aware that the DPRK is using ballistic missile technology, um, which is a violation of multiple UN security resolutions. Um, the behavior that we've seen continues to uh, destabilize and undermine security in the region. But other than that, I just don't have have more at this time. Uh, sure. When will the missile warning information system for North Korea between the United States and South Korea, Japan, uh, begin to operate under the recent Camp David, you know, agreement? You know, do you have anything on that? When when they're gonna be, uh, you know, working this system right away? Well, you mean following the Camp David? Uh, meeting. I mean, I we just conducted a trilateral exercise that followed the historic Camp David summit. Um, it brought together, of course, even closer the leaders of the United States, Japan, and the ROC. Um, we are committed to peace and prosperity in the region, and we'll continue to engage with our partners and allies in the region. But I don't have more in terms of any any further response from the United States. Hey, Laura. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Senator Kane recently called for an investigation into the accident in Australia that killed three Marines the other mm -hmm. day. Uh, is DOD going to be doing an investigation into this um, this specific incident, and not just this specific incident, but a broader investigation of these mishaps, aviation mishaps that have been happening? Sure. Well, first, as you probably saw, the secretary over the weekend issued a statement just um, offering our condolences, and of course, we'd love I'd like to offer that here from the podium. Our, our deepest condolences go out to the Marines that were killed in that exercise. Um, as with any training accident, there is an investigation underway to determine um, exactly what happened. And uh, you've heard from myself and others that the safety and security of any of our service members is a priority. So, of course, we would take any lessons learned from that investigation and apply it forward. Um, I'm sorry, and your second question? A broader investigation of the aviation mishaps that have been So happening. each each mishap that happens or each incident, um, there is always an investigation that happens, but I would view these as, as separate ones, um, not a not one that needs to be a, like a, a holistic view of any aircraft or um, any operation. So there is an investigation into this incident as there have been investigations in the past to individual mishaps or incidents. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Sabrina. Uh, just to follow up on on the, on the Osprey line of questioning, sure. um, uh, starting starting last year, both the Air Force and the Marine Corps acknowledged that the Osprey has this uh, rare but persistent issue with its clutch. Does the DoD is the DoD concerned about this engineering fault, which the Marines admit doesn't have a permanent solution yet, as far as just the platform itself is concerned broadly? Well, in terms of the um, the incident that happened over this past weekend, again, that's still under investigation. So I don't want to jump ahead or or get to um, jump to any conclusions that haven't been reached yet. As I mentioned to Laura, each incident undergoes its own investigation. I wouldn't right now apply um, a a sweeping broad stroke across every incident, linking them together. Um, they're all very unfortunate. They, you know, every time this happens, of course. Uh, we are. We always think about the service members who um, are putting their lives at risk, but I wouldn't say that um, they're all connected in in one way or the other. Does the Pentagon have confidence in the Osprey as a as an airframe? <clears throat> I, I think we, we do certainly have confidence in the Osprey. Um, if anything changes, if these investigations lead to something that would uh, cause us or a service to adjust. Um, anything about how we believe the Osprey should be used, we would do that, but at this time, we have confidence in that. Hey, Dan. Isn't it worth looking at a broader issue of aviation safety? I mean, there was a GAO report, as you know, that did say there was a broader problem in the Army and the National Guard over a whole 
a period of years where they found that there was a problem with maintenance uh, and a problem with pilots being able to get enough hours in the air because the aircraft weren't ready to fly. Is that something you're at least considering, a broader look at safety? At, at the moment, right now, no. We are focused on um, what happened in this particular incident and what has happened in previous incidents, but I wouldn't, I really would, would, um, steer away from linking them together right now because they're still being investigated. And until we have a proper conclusion, I just, I don't want to get ahead of anything that, an, ahead of the investigation or ahead of any recommendation um, that the secretary or a service might have for the secretary. Could you just clarify, sure. but just in terms of uh, the storm, the hurricane, yeah. uh, for U.S. bases, uh, what I may have missed it. Are you, are those, what's the, what are the precautions being taken? So in terms of each base, there are, I think, approximately 20 in the state of Florida, and each one will conduct its own um, evacuation uh, procedures depending on where they are. So I would refer you to each installation in terms of how they're handling the incoming storm or the incoming hurricane. Um, we have had uh, MacDill uh, uh, evacuate non-essential personnel as they are I believe the storm is coming up right um, along the coast there. And But in terms of other individual bases, I would just refer you to the service for, for more questions. Great. Yeah, right here. Thanks. On uh, Turkey, the, uh, the U.S. Embassy in Turkey announced that uh, USS Gerald Ford was uh, uh, docked, I guess, over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Turkish media reports say that there was a joint exercise, and they called it the largest ever between the two militaries. Can you, uh, sh you know, give any, provide any details on those joint military exercises? Sure, I'd have to actually take that question for you. I just don't have more details to provide from here at this time, so I'd be happy to take that one. One more. Sure. Um, the, I believe it was m April, the Turkish drone strike that targeted a convoy that had a Kurdish uh, military official and three U.S. service members in it. There was an investigation launch, the Pentagon, uh, you know, told us at the time, and repeated, uh, you know, repeated questions asking about that investigation the the response that we've gotten multiple times now is that there's no comment um is this investigation closed is there a reason um could you provide any updates on that i think i believe you asked me about this just a few months ago um i i don't have any updates for you at this time i'm happy to take a look and come back to you but at the moment from this podium right now i just don't have any updates i'm gonna go to the phones really quickly um jim laporta the messenger Hi, thank you for doing this. Um, on the uh, security assistance to Ukraine that was announced today, um, I had two questions. The the 100, uh, 155 millimeter artillery shells, does that include deep pickums? And then also, is this the first time the U.S. has sent Sidewinders, the, uh, the AIM uh, 9Ms? Um, I do, in terms of the Sidewinders, I do not believe so, but I, I'd be happy to check that. Um, in terms of the, if were there any depictums included in this round of, uh, in terms of were there any depictums included in this 45th drawdown, there were not. Uh, with that, I will go to Heather, USNI. Great, thank you so much. Um, I was wondering, just to go back to the Osprey questions, uh, what is the breakdown between the US and Australia in terms of investigations going on into what happened with the crash? Well, the, the um, Marine Corps will be conducting its own investigation, but of course this was a joint exercise, so there will be collaboration and, um, and partnership there. But for more details on the investigation, I would refer you to the, to the Marine Corps to answer those questions. Okay, great, I'll come back in the room. Uh, Oren and then Carla. Uh, there's a there's a hearing going on right now with um, Gold Star families from the Abbey Gate bombing, and at the beginning of the hearing, Congressman McCall, chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, said, two years later, we're still here seeking answers. How did this happen? What went wrong? Why couldn't this tragedy have been prevented? These questions remain unanswered because this administration wants to sweep what happened under the rug. They know they bear the brunt of the blame, and they want to escape any accountability. Do you care to respond to that? Well, I haven't seen the comments that were made as as. You I think you mentioned that this is ongoing right now, but um, first let me say that uh, the secretary and others in this department have um, expressed their incredible, um, they're incredibly grateful for the service and sacrifice that our, our service members have made um, in Afghanistan and, and those who were committed to the evacuation operations. Um, in terms of responding to some of the comments that were made, I think you know that CENTCOM conducted a very comprehensive 
credible and definitive investigation into the Abbey Gate bombing following the attack. Um, our U.S. military commanders on the ground made the best decisions that they could, uh, that they were provided um, with of the, of the um, uh, intelligence and the evidence that they were given on the ground to, uh, that they were able to make those decisions in, in I'm sorry, let me just take a step back because I realize I'm sort of jumbling my words here. U.S. military commanders on the ground in Afghanistan made, the, made decisions that they could with the information that they had at the time. Um, they were fully given, um, uh, they, they were given the decision-making capability and were responding to threats on the ground in real time. And so we are very proud of the work that our commanders and our service members did, not during just the evacuation in those um, few weeks, but over the 20-year war. Um, and I think, as you probably know, that we also did uh, a very um, deep investigative AAR that we submitted to Congress that also provided um, uh, members of the SASC and, and Haas Committee with our findings of um, not just the um, evacuation, but just our t larger takeaways from Afghanistan. And I'll leave it at that. One follow-up sure. question. Congressman McCall is, is has been working on his own investigation of the withdrawal itself and the circumstances around it. You talked about the CENTCOM investigation, the yeah. AAR as well, that looked over all of that. Is it your position that there is that, that there is nothing more to learn, that everything that has been learned about it could be learned, or is there more information out there that could be made public that we haven't heard about yet? Well, I think I think from the investigations and from this, the investigation that CENTCOM did, in, in particular around Abbey Gate, it was incredibly exhaustive, interviewing over 100 members that were um, on the ground and um, in this department to figure out what exactly happened. Um, we, of course, welcome transparency. We welcome accountability. Um, we are accountable to Congress. And that is why we submitted the AAR when we did. That's also why CENTCOM led the investigation and interviewed the, um, the many people that were involved in the evacuation. And so um, we feel confident in our efforts to um, get to the truth, uh, to get to um, the facts. and. Of course, what we think about um, as we are coming up on the two-year anniversary is um, the service members, the civilians who dedicated their lives um, in Afghanistan. And so that's something that we're thinking about uh, around the two-year anniversary as we close out the month of August. I think I said Carla next. Yeah, yeah. sure. And I think that Chairman Milley had said that he would welcome additional investigations um, to the, the post. Um, do, does the Pentagon support additional investigations? Just I know you said you you uh, welcome transparency. Is that a yes that you are welcoming McCall's investigation as well? If there is an investigation led in Congress, of course we will cooperate. But again, we feel very confident in the efforts that were led by CENTCOM and by um, our the the CIGAR report that was submitted to Congress um, on our efforts in Afghanistan. And then on Niger, has the U.S. flown any drone missions out of any bases in Niger uh, since the president of Niger was forcibly removed from office? So I'm not going to comment on any ISR um, capabilities or flights out of Niger, but what I can tell you is that um, we continue to maintain and protect our interests in the region, and we'll continue to work to protect our allies and partners in the region, um, and we have other means of doing that. But I just don't have anything more to say. We'll say whether or not it's we don't comment on ISR operations, so I'm just not going to go into that. Okay. Well, how I mean, is the counter terror mission in West Africa uh, is that on pause as a whole? Because I mean, not just in Niger, but those drone bases are responsible for areas outside of Niger as well. So we have other way. I mean, again, we have um, we have redundancies around the world and, and in um, the region that allow for us to continue to protect our interests uh, of our allies and the United States, but I'm just not going to get into any further intelligence. Okay, and so finally, would you say that the counterterrorism uh, mission in West Africa, is it being hindered by this situation, this coup, or it, are things able to go as business as usual? Well, it's certainly not business as usual as we're not conducting um, we're not conducting operations or uh, conducting um, 
any other exercises within our, our Nigerian counterparts at this moment. Uh, what we're focused on, what um, this building and other agencies remain focused on, um, is seeing a resolve to this diplomatically. And so I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Hey, Chris. On um, the thank you. Uh, on Hello. the uh, <laughs> on the forces the U.S. Um, sent to the Gulf um, in response to the Iranian actions that mm -hmm. um, you yourself announced and said didn't want to put a timeline on. Um, has the Pentagon seen a decrease in that Iranian threat? Uh, how are you going to judge when those forces are can draw you know come back and and when they need to stay. I mean, how? what's that look like in this building? Well, I, I can't predict the future. Um, so I will say that, you know, as long as there remains a need for these forces to be in the region, they're going to stay there. Um, they are there to deter any um, threats or um, unprofessional, unsafe from IRGC back groups, and I'll just have to leave it at that. When you say the same forces, is it possible that it, 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 these forces remain in the region? Is yep. that force posture, or could we see rotational of, of similar assets if this um, becomes an ongoing? I don't really have. I don't have anything to announce today. Um, I have no updates or or changes to announce in terms of um, the forces that were moved to the region at this time. If that does change, I'd be happy to read that out. But at this moment, I just don't have anything. Great. Do you have anything on else? Sure, David. The, uh, the drawdown, um, how much is left now in the Ukraine funding? And yeah. do you, does that um, authority expire at the end of September or does it carry over into the next fiscal year? Um, good question. So in terms of how much is left, I would have to take that question and get back to you. I just don't have that on hand in, in terms of the funds that are left. You you might remember that this was um, a recalculation done of previous PDAs. So because it was a recalculation, um, this would not expire at the end of the fiscal year. Um, we're confident that we will have enough money to meet Ukraine's need through the fiscal year. But as you know, there's been a request for a supplemental um, and we're, we're hopeful uh, that a um, that the Congress will approve a supplemental package for for Ukraine. Um, put that answer out as a taken question for the for how much is left. Yes, absolutely. Yep, Liz, and then I'll come back to you. Um, thanks. Can you explain the um, announcement from Secretary Hicks a little bit from yesterday on the um, replicator drone program? Sure. Um, so the replicator uh, initiative is another tool. Uh, for us to innovate and to modernize and to keep um, a pace with the PRC. Um, the, the replicator is, is basically a way to accelerate innovation by the warfighter by delivering low-cost autonomous systems at a scale of multiple thousands across warfighting domains, and that should be in a timeline between 18 to 24 months. Um, the secretary and the deputy have been focused on this urgency to innovate, and the replicator is that next step. Great. Sure, Fadi. Hi. One more on Niger. Has there been any uh, efforts of, to evacuate uh, personnel from uh, American personnel from uh, Niger involving uh, U.S. assets from Europe? There's been no change to our force posture at this moment. Um, so, in terms of any evacuations, I would say no. Um, if that changes, I'd be happy to keep you updated. Um, I will take one more question from the phone, Howard Altman. Hey, thanks, Sabrina. I got two questions, actually. One is on uh, uh, the Pickhams. Uh, David Ignatius over the weekend talked about the rocket launch to Pickhams, probably the M26, being uh, the U.S. being closer to providing those. Can you give us an update? Is that on the table? And then I have a question about uh, Ukraine claims and satellite imagery seems to back that up, that um, Russia is sinking ferries along the uh, Kerch Bridge to protect it against sea drones, and, and I wanted to get a uh, Pentagon assessment on that. Hey, thanks, Howard, for the question. I just don't have, on, on both of those questions, I just don't have more of an update to provide. I'm um, on the on your second part, just on in terms of where, I think you're asking on where Russians are amassing forces along um, a bridge. I'm just not going to get into any intelligence intelligence assessments um, that we have here. I would refer you to the Ukrainians um, to speak to their operations. Um, in terms of what the Ukrainians are doing in their counteroffensive, um, we're seeing 
that they have m continued to make slow progress and um, are continuing in this fight as um, the months continue. And so I would just leave it at that and, and, and direct you to the Ukrainians for further comment. Great. Anyone else know? Dan. Okay, last question to Dan, and then I'll wrap it up. Um, uh, presumably, attack ems are still not uh, something that the administration is considering providing Ukraine. I don't have any update for you on anything that we're providing regarding attack ems. Is it still under consideration? Or? I mean, I have no updates for you when it comes to attack ems. I think the Ukrainians, as you've seen, have been using um, whether it's the HIMARS or um, uh, the Storm Shadow uh, in quite incredible effect on the battlefield, but I just don't have anything to announce when it comes to attack arms. Just going back to the question about the, the Gulf, um, mm -hmm. is, is since in, over the past several months, has the threat reduced in terms of U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria from Iranian-backed militia or in the, the Strait of Hormuz in terms of commercial shipping? Is there an assessment that the temperature has dropped slightly in that whole situation? I wouldn't know that I'd make an assessment on temperature dropping. We continue to see um, harassment uh, over the past few weeks. We've ha seen harassment um, from IRGC-backed groups over commercial uh, ships. And so um, as that continues, um, that's why we moved our forces into the region as we did. Um, we have not seen that threat drop, I would say, so we haven't seen a reason to move our forces out. So in t until there's a change, um, you know, I, w I would just, I'm just going to leave it at that. And then the final thing that has got some attention, um, is the U.S. considering reestablishing the nuclear weapons mission in the United Kingdom? Um, I, think I, I, th I think I saw the report that you're referencing. So um, consistent with our longstanding practice, we just do not disclose the specifics of U.S. nuclear posture. Um, or basing, it is U.S. policy to neither confirm nor deny the presence or absence of nuclear weapons at any general or specific location. I'll leave it at that. Thank you.